Well, hi folks, and welcome to Abahal Junction. And today, how much does this two loop 8x4 DCC layout cost? A couple of side ends and a second and first radius loop. This is the start of my layout. There's going to be a uh, mountain there, and there's obviously going to be a dock here at some point. Um, and there's another incline at the start of those blocks there to go up to the mountain, a coal mine, and a heritage loop, heritage station, heritage station there, and a turntable. But anyway, this is an opportune time. I'll tell you how much the logos cost, how much the boards cost, and how much these tracks cost. And I'll also go under the board to have a look at the wiring. So yeah, stick with me. Hopefully you can get all this done in 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, if you like what you see, press the like button. And if you want to subscribe, I appreciate that too. And uh, I appreciate all the new people who've joined recently. Thanks for that. And uh, I'm going to attribute this to the legend that is Fred Dibner, being interviewed there by Michael Portillo as the Abedonian for his first run with a camera video to follow at some point um yeah first run on the heritage line thanks for coming guys i um, hope you enjoy cheers let's get into it okay we'll start this uh layout cost video with the items which individually will be your biggest outlay and that is the locos. So here's my fleet of locos, which is pretty much complete for what I need for my layout. I probably need one more small shunter to work in the coal mine. Um, that Janus shunter there is going to be do be my dock shunter. But yes, so this is my my fleet, if you like. Very impressive, trooping the colour on the Queen's birthday. Um, yeah, there's a broad range of costs here. Um, I go wherever I can for sound locos. The only one that's not uh, DCC sound chipped is the Janus Shunter. And in all fairness, I probably will never get around to, to fixing that for sound. I've also, to try and reduce costs slightly, um, I got the Class 37 off eBay. And I also got the 125 um, off eBay as well. Um, like any, you know, first hand loco you buy or second hand loco there's a risk that it won't be a great runner the class 37 is a beautiful runner i'm really pleased with it um the 125 on the other hand is not so good <laughs> so yeah that's the risk you take right and so in terms of costs starting from the left the 125 which came dcc um tts chip so it's got sound it's got lights um, it's got one coach plus the dummy car at the end. That was 150 quid, so I think quite good value if it if it was a good runner. The class one two one was a bargain from Hattons. Um, that was 80 quid. Uh, sorry, 90 quid for the loco. I then went all out because it was the first one I bought and put a lock sound V5 chip in there, and that was 120 quid. So all in that loco with you know, real nice um, ESU sound is 210 quid. That's a chunk of cash. Then the Abedonian, and I got that as a steal on Amazon, but direct from Hornby. Uh, I got that for 150 quid, and I recently put the TTS chip in there. It's a real bugger to try and get the chip in. It's actually fitted into the to the front smoke box there. Um, that was 40 quid. So in total, that loco has cost me 190 quid to have um, DCC sound. The Janus Shunter then, as I said, the only one that doesn't have sound, that's got a simple four pin Hornby chip in there, which I got Hattons to install for me because I wasn't too confident of doing it at that point. Now I'm happy to take these apart and chuck chips in there. That was 50 quid from Hattons, which is again an absolute steal. They're now up to about 80 quid. And the chip installation on top was another 20. So that loco cost me 70 quid. The class 37 then from Flea Bay, um, that was 90 quid. Um, I really wanted it because it's the Philly Castle um, loco. Um, 
and being from the valleys it's uh, close to my heart so that was 90 quid real good runner i recently put a tts chip in there as well for 40 quid um in addition to the tts chips i changed out the standard tts speakers for iphone 5 speakers from roads and rails highly recommend that it's five quid or something and the sound is so much better so all in that loco cost me 130 quid in addition to the locos obviously you're going to need some coaches and some wagons so for the demonstration purposes today of you know a two loop dcc layout what i'm going to do is include these three um with the class 37 um i've just got this fairly stereotypical not long rake as some of the 40 foot uh, uh layouts will attest to but you know for an eight by four it's a reasonable rake so six wagons there and they typically cost about eight quid so those six cost me around about 50 quid in total and then the Abedonian train pack comes with those coaches, which are going to fly through the background now as they go down my steep incline. So that actually didn't cost me anything extra. So the 190 quid that I paid for the Abedonian, which is now without the TTS chips, 180 quid. So, you know, with a TTS would be about 220 now. That also comes with three wagons, uh, sorry, three coaches. So yeah, so those three, plus the coaches, plus the wagons, all in, is 440 quid. So a big chunk of cash, but for a small, you know, 8 by 4 layout with, you know, two trains which can go round and round the loop, plus a shunter for your sidings, all in, you're looking at, yeah, the best part of 450 quid. So, yeah, that's a chunk of cash. Um, but it's by far the biggest outlay you've got for your for your layout. And there is cheaper versions, you know. You could, of course, go railroad. This is actually a railroad model here. You could go, you know, just have a couple of these and it would cost you 150 quid as opposed to 450 quid. Um, yeah, taking out the sound. If you go, you know, lock sound, the ESU lock sound chips are very expensive. You know, best part of 125 quid. Whereas the TTS chips then, if they have them available for your loco, are 40 quid. You know, so it's it's a cheap way of getting sound into your locos. Um, but yeah, chunk of cash, 440 quid. Let's move on to the points, which is the next biggest outlay that you'll be getting for your layout. Okay, so the next biggest outlay, outlay is points. So in this current setup, I've got one, two, three medium radius electrofrog points in that little uh, throat to the station there. And then up here then on the entrance to what will be the docks, um, I have two more. I have one left hand um large radius point there let's turn off so i don't have to talk over it and one right hand radius uh medium uh electrofrog point there yeah they broadly cost around again depends on where you get them if you get them from a local um model shop They'll be about 13 quid. If you get them from one of the big box stores like um, Hatton's, uh, you know, Rails of Sheffield, whatever, they'll cost you about 12 quid. Um, just for the purposes of this um, demonstration or costing, if you like, I'm, I have a, a Pico twist lock point motors on all of mine. Um, but I won't include those in the total cost that I develop for this layout. But I will include the cost for them as like optional extras down the bottom. So you can see how much they cost. They're around about £16, including the micro switch. Um, I also have um, old style Pico um, levers for all my points. Yeah, you see those? 
changing together there, that crossover. Um, yeah, again, obviously without the motors, I'm not going to include this, but I will include the costing for CDU, the adapter, blah, blah, the, the housing for this, the casing, etc., and the levers. But yes, so in terms of the points then, as I said, about 13 quid a go. So for these five, that's 65 pounds for the points. So yeah, not not terrible, but it is it is they're much more expensive than straights, flex track, and um, set track curves as well. So yeah, you have to be a bit selective, um, you know, in terms of if you're trying to keep costs down, how many points you want to get because. Yeah, they do add complexity of wiring as well as uh, a little bit of cost. Whereas, yeah, flex track, you know, three or four quid, cheap as chips, and that's for a 90 centimeter run. So, yeah, <laughs> the points are definitely more expensive, as you know, as they should be, because as you can see, it's quite a lot of complexity in there. There's springs and levers and all sorts of good engineering. Okay, so let's move on to the track itself. Okay, so onto track laying. Um, this is the equipment here that I use to do my track laying. Um, I use this Woodland Scenics track bed, this foam track bed you see here, this black stuff. Um, yeah, I find it really easy to use. Um, quick pro tip or amateur tip if you are doing it on slightly sharper radius curves um certainly if it's first radius you can split it in half before you lay it it makes it a lot easier to get it down i've got a video up there if you want to look at laying foam track bed on tight radius curves all right so yeah fairly straightforwardly um foam track bed i use the sl14 track fixing pins i use a pinhole tiny teeny tiny drill to drill the holes first. Um, I did try and get away without using that, but it actually takes quite a bit of effort and it's only eight quid to get that done. Uh, track cutters then. So as I said, the flex track comes in 90 centimeter lengths. And if you need to cut it, I've got these, which are the vertical ones, which means you can do it in place as well. These are Zuron track cutters, they're 18 quid. Yeah, track pins. This is a cheapo Ikea hammer. Um, I bought this teeny tiny one from Hobbycraft, but I actually find it easier just to use the big one and just be careful not to hit the rails. It's easier to get the nails in, uh, the pins in, and you know, as long as you're gentle, you don't break them. The track at Aberholt Junction is a mix of flex track for all the straights and some of the slightly less sharp curves although this track here from there to there is actually about one and a half radius and that's out of flex track you've just got to make sure you pin it in quite aggressively um, and then i've got some this is a second radius pico all the tracks pico um find it really good so up here is all the track and all the costs so the track itself isn't that expensive really this track bed stuff, I've used two rolls of this so far. This is the third one. Um, and it's 15 quid a go, which is quite expensive. Um, but this 8x4 layout um, is only... Uh, so that's 30 quid in terms of um, underlay. I did, for this first bit here, which is under the mountain, I did mess with copy decks and foam tack glue, but I found it's much easier just to pin the stuff. You'll note on that bit there, I haven't done any of the underlay and that's because this bit, everything you see essentially from there out is gonna be a mountain. Uh, there's gonna be a coal mine here and a heritage station up there. So yeah, no need to do underlay there. Um, I did do this first bit just to, just to try it out. In terms of wiring then, um, I got the, I bought some SL72 or whatever, the actual code will be there. Um, Pico droppers, SL71 maybe. They're 
about eight quid for four pairs. So what I then started doing is actually making my own. So if you've got a soldering iron and, and very poor skills like I have, you can still solder up droppers. Or alternatively, of course, you can just solder the wires directly to the base of your uh, flex track. There's a lot of debate on how to do that. <laughs> um, my two loops don't give me any issues. I have done the recommended and put droppers on every connection, essentially. So there's an awful lot of um, droppers and uh, connections to the main bus. In terms of the connections to the main bus, because I'm not too au fait at soldering, I use these Wago connectors. Um, I think these for 50 of these three, which allow you two to be your bus, which goes in a circle and then one to the dropper. Uh, I think for this 50, they were about 15 quid. So in total, I'd probably spend about 20 quid in terms of getting the um, the main bus sorted. Wire then, wire then, it's just uh, fairly simplistic stuff. I've got a red and a black for the bus, and I've got green for frogs for the for the points for the micro switches. So yeah, uh, probably the main outlay for the ancillary bits of the track is the the underlay track itself you know the the flex track is about three or four quid depending on where you get it from the set track pieces are really cheap you know a couple of quid so in terms of all the track you see here apart from the points which i've already discussed the track itself is actually a very small outlay um, i'll put the exact amount there but before i actually calculate i'm guessing it'd be about 30 quid or something yeah, not a big chunk of cash. As I said, then this is about an 8 by 4 layout, just to reiterate. Yeah, okay, so now let's move on to powering and controlling this whole thing. Okay, there's always a lot of debate on the forums for uh, what people use in terms of their transformers, the controllers. Um, I've gone for the Hornby Select. Um, I got this one direct from Hornby, um, just because as I was setting out, I wanted to actually buy it direct from Hornby. I wanted to make sure that I had the most up-to-date firmware. That is key. Um, this cost me £125 from Hornby. If you shop around now, you can get them for about £110. Quid. The key thing is to check that it has the most up-to-date firmware. The reason for that is then you can write CVs to your logos. It also gets rid of a few bugs. So yeah, check it's got the right firmware. And yeah, you can get this for about 110. The one up from this, um, which a lot of people like, is the NC Power Cab. And that's about 170 to 180 quid. So, you know, 50% more than this. The the Elite then, which is the you know the more advanced version for the Hornby one, is about 230 quid. Um now that's two controllers and lots more CV writing capabilities. But as a beginner, you know, you can have 59 locals or something on this. Um, I actually find it completely reasonable. You, you've got to get the most up-to-date firmware. That's the key thing. And then a lot of the compatibility issues that a lot of the forums talk about disappear. And yeah, it's a perfectly good loco for, you know, for the beginner. Does does everything it needs to do, like that, which is drive a loco and Put on sound and you know all that good stuff. Yeah, I I'm personally a big fan, but I guess I'm biased because I've got one. But it's a cheap, good starter uh, controller. I would recommend it. I personally didn't go down the yeah you know, the new app phone route because. Apart from doing YouTube videos on my phone like this one, I like to get off my phone um, once I'm in my shed. And hence, I like this old school thing. It's, you know, it's like the olden days when <laughs> I was doing this when I was 14. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good controller. Okay. Okay, so in terms of others, and for others I'll also include the baseboards because there's a lot of variation in what people do in terms of baseboards. I've gone for 18 mil um, external ply, 
because my shed, um, you might be able to see up there, is terribly leaky um, and was. I've fixed most of it now. But um, yeah, I've gone for 18 mil external ply to ensure that there's no issues. Ignore that, that's just me not being able to cut properly. Um, and then underneath then I've gone for CLS for the legs and for the cross members. So I've gone very belts and braces. Um, it means I can also get up on the board and do stuff up, you know, up in the shed and other places. So it's actually a low bearing um, construction. You certainly don't have to go that over the top. You can get an eight by four, 12 mil sheet to ply for like 30 quid from B&Q. You know, legs, probably similar again. So in terms of ba baseboard cost, you know, less than 100 quid certainly can be done. Um, if you just do a baseboard on the floor, you know, 30 quid, 25 quid even, you can get your baseboard on the floor and just pin your track to that. So, yeah, not a, not a big outlay in terms of baseboard. The other thing which actually saves you a bunch of cash, in my opinion, especially if you're thinking about using the Pico droppers, um, depending on the size of your layout, once you start buying packs and packs of them, your cost-benefit analysis would certainly say to buy a soldering iron instead. This one's from Lendon's, um, it's about 30 quid. And yeah, you know, three or four packs of droppers um, and it already pays for itself. And it's and it's good fun. It's um, not as severe as you might think. So yeah, you just get a, get a bit of solder, soldering iron, flux if you're a pro um, and crack on with it. I also recently, just in terms of an optional additional splurging, I bought this eight man um, camera from uh, Amazon and it's, it's just a lot of fun. It's, you know, I've, I've just knocked up, I've just took off uh, uh, the top of a wagon and just used the, the, the bogies and the chassis to, uh, to construct a little cradle for it about 40 quid yeah just for giggles really and uh yeah it's good fun yeah so that's it that's it folks um so there's now the compiled table and you can see the the total cost there's cheap you know there's other options you can of course buy like the mixed freight set from hornby um and then you can get you know a starter pack with two loops plus two logos uh, sorry, one loop plus two sidings plus two locos for the you know rock bottom price of about two hundred and thirty quid, DCC etc etc. So there is cheaper ways of doing it, but in terms of if you want to do it, you know, not buying a train set and trying to do it slightly properly like this, even though some people would argue, <laughs> um, then you know it it does cost a bit more. Now I've done the initial outlay. Um, you know, there's not an awful lot more to come. There's probably another, I don't know, maybe 300 quid to finish off all the um, track parts of it and do some of the, the scenics as well. So all in, you know, you, you are talking a chunk of cash, but I've spread mine out over, um, you know, the best part of a year. So it's not as if you have to spend all of that outlay right at the start. You know, once you've got a, a controller, a bit of track, one loco you can get cracking so you know that's sub 300 quid probably to to actually get a simple one loop set up and uh and get going in this great hobby and yeah the purpose of doing this video is just to show that it's not as extortionate as some people might think um if you compare it to you know a golf membership or going skiing or smoking 20 cigarettes a day um it's actually quite cheap and it's probably really good for your health Certainly good for mindfulness. So yeah, thanks for coming, folks. Um, hope you liked this video. If you did, please mash that like button and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time at Arbor Holt Junction, where these three, or these two at least, we may have stopped talking. Cheers now. Bye.